Let's now take a look at an example and see if we can find some more accurate information about some J omega axis crossings. So we're gonna look at a system that is actually from an earlier example in the textbook. So example 8.2 on page 317 in the eighth edition text. And we're gonna come back and take a look at that system a little later. And what we're gonna focus on though is our closed loop transfer function, which is given by this T of S expression below. So we see we have a K times S plus three in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have S to the fourth plus seven S cubed plus 14 S squared plus the quantity of eight plus K times S plus three times K. And so we wanna find two things here. We wanna find the omega, our oscillation, and K for the J omega axis crossing. So that omega actually is our oscillation frequency. And so as we said in the previous video, what we're going to do is we're going to make a Ralph table. So whenever we're talking about stability, of course, Ralph table is what we wanna think. So with our Ralph table, of course, what we're interested in is the denominator of this closed loop transfer function. So we see the highest order there is our S to the fourth. So we can start our Ralph table by labeling our rows. So we have S to the fourth, S cubed, S squared, S to the first, and S to the zero. And our first row, I'm gonna get from our coefficients 1, 14, and 3K. So I have 1, 14, and 3K. And the next row is going to be those coefficients that I skipped. But when I get over here, I don't have any other coefficients, so I'm just gonna put a zero. So I have seven, the quantity of eight plus K, and then a zero. So what I can do now is I can go through the same procedures we did to make our Ralph table in a previous unit. And so you can do this for practice if you want, but what we'll see is that for our S squared row, I have 90 minus K and 21 K, and this is zero. And so one thing to note here is I've multiplied this by seven just to make it look a little cleaner. So multiplied by seven. And then in our S to the first row, what we're going to get is negative K squared minus 65 K plus 720. All of that divided by 90 minus K, zero, zero. And then finally, in this last row, we have 21 K, zero, and zero. So what we're going to assume is our gain is positive. So we're assuming that our K is greater and we can actually say we can let it equal to zero as well. So remember what we're trying to get here is we want a row of zeros. So we want a row of zeros in our Ralph table. And so of course we can't have that in these first two rows because we have our one, our seven, our 14, which are just fixed values. Uh, we see we, we could have it with our 21K, but that's a gain of zero. So that's, that's sort of where we start. So that, that's not really gonna be too helpful. Uh, so we have two contenders left. So we have this row here, where again, we could have that gain of zero for our 21K, but if we have a zero gain, then we have 90 here. So we can't satisfy, we can't make both of those zero at the same time. So what we wanna focus on then is this row here. So what we have then is we're going to set that first term equal to zero and solve. So we have negative K squared minus 65 K plus 720 is equal to zero, okay? And so what we can say from that is if we solve that, and again, you can use quadratic equation, you can use MATLAB and the roots function, um, whatever your method, uh, whatever your preferred method is, you end up getting two values of K and we're gonna ignore the negative gain value because again, our K is assumed to be positive. And so we're gonna say that our gain is approximately 9.65. Okay, so now if we wanna figure out the frequency of oscillation omega, what we talked about doing in the previous video is we go to the row above the row of zeros that we created and we plug in that K value. So going to that row above, we have 90 minus K, which is going to be times S squared. So we have 90 minus K times S squared plus 21 K and we set that equal to zero. And so again, we're just plugging in that 9.65. So we have 90 minus 9.65 is our K value. 
times S squared plus 21 times our 9.65. Solve that for our S. So we get that our S is equal to approximately plus or minus J 1.59. And now, of course, we sort of expected this because we expect this to be our, our S value to just have uh, imaginary part, no real part. And so in general, remember our S is equal to sigma plus J omega. And in this case, we don't have that real part. So what we can say by inspection then is that this 1.59 is going to be our omega term. So we can say our omega is plus or minus 1.59 radians per second. Okay, so now let's take a quick look at sort of our, our system we started with. So remember, we started with the closed loop system, but let's go back to sort of this example 8.2 and, and visualize our root locus as well as our block diagram. So here's our block diagram, and I've got a little plot in our complex plane ready so we can get some practice doing our root locus. So what we see is we have one zero, so of our open loop function, so again, um, let me go back here to black. So we have a unity feedback system. So H of S is equal to one. So that means our open loop transfer function, which is G of S, H of S is just equal to G of S. So I'm looking at this function up here as I'm calling these uh, open loop zeros and open loop poles. So we have an open loop zero at negative three. So one, two, three. So I have an open loop zero here. And then we have four open loop poles. So I have one at zero, one at negative one, one at negative two, and one at negative four. And so because I have a mismatch in my number of finite zeros and poles, what that tells me is I'm gonna have three infinite zeros. Because remember, if we include our infinite zeros and our infinite poles, we should have an equal number. And so because I have infinite zeros or infinite poles, that means I'm going to have asymptotes. And I'm not gonna go through the details of doing that, but I'll leave it to you all to verify that for our asymptotes, we have a real axis of sigma a, which is equal to negative four thirds. And then because we have three of them, our angles are gonna be the same as in an example we saw previously. So we're gonna have them at angles of pi thirds pi, and five pi thirds. So essentially just equal spacing around that 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and add that information down here. So at negative four thirds, so roughly about here is where our x-intercept of the asymptotes are. We have one at an angle of pi, so something like that. We have one at an angle of pi thirds, so let's say roughly like that, and one at an angle of five pi thirds or negative pi thirds, so something that looks like that. Let me see if I can make that a little better in terms of being symmetric. Okay, so there are our asymptotes. So the next piece of information we wanna put on here is our root locus just on the plot. So using the rules, what I can see is I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be on the real axis here, and I'm gonna be on the real axis here, and I'm gonna be on the real axis to the left of this final pole here. And so in terms of direction, we can see sort of in this middle set, it's going to be starting at, at this pole and ending at this zero. We have this branch, which is just starting at this pole and going towards negative infinity. And then we have these two, which are going towards each other. And then there's going to be a breakaway point and they're going to approach those two asymptotes. So again, that should be symmetrical about, uh, about our real axis. So let's see if I can draw that a little bit better. So we get something that looks like this for our root locus. So the reason I wanted to go through that is again, just practice drawing that root locus, but also now what we can do is we can relate this information to that graph that we had below. So we said our gain for our J omega axis crossing is 9.65 and the frequency is plus or minus 1.59. So let's relate that to our graph down here. Excuse me. Um, so what we're saying then so let me make that a little smaller, um, is that this point right here and this point right here, we have omega is equal to 1.59. And remember this is J omega value. And here we have omega equals negative 1.59. And we also have a corresponding gain value. So remember our gain is going to be zero at the starting point of our poles. 
it's increasing as we move along these paths. So we're saying when we're at these points, we have our gain of about 9.65, I believe it was. So gain is 9.65. So let's just scroll up to double check. Yes, so 9.65. So that's what this information looks like when we combine it with our root locus for our system.